morning, everybody. Welcome to St. Thomas's. My name is Ben, and it is wonderful to have you here today. I'm the vicar here at St. Thomas's, and it's brilliant to have you with us. I'm leading the serv- bits of the service today along with Amara. Say hello, Amara. Hello. Um, Amara is my goddaughter, and she'll be popping up to help lead bits of the service today. Um, Today is the first in our summer Sundays here at St. Thomas's. Now, you wouldn't guess from the weather outside, would you, that it is the end of July. But I thought I'd bring a bit of the summer vibes this morning with my one of my summer T-shirts. But despite the weather outside, we're going to have a great morning because the Spirit of God is here. Amen. And we're going to celebrate communion together. We're going to hear from God's Word. And at the end of our time together today. There's a church family lunch, which we are really excited about. So please do stay for that if you are able. Now, before we go any further, I'd love us to greet those around us by sharing, seeing as though it's the start of summer, and something to do with summer. So here's the question I'd like you to ask your neighbor or somebody that you've not met before. What's your favorite summer memory? Um, Amara just to help people get going. What's your favorite summer memory, do you think? Let's just try that again. Uh, Mara? Going on holiday with you and Ellie. Oh, that's nice. That's one of my favorite summer memories as well, Mara. Um, Okay, why don't we, uh, with the people around us, say hello and share your favorite summer memory. That'd be great. Thank you. During these summer Sundays, there's going to be lots of different people getting up and helping us um, lead through our services together. And because through August, it's the school holidays, um, lots of the church family go on holiday and lots of our church family here, a huge percentage of them are university students and they're all away for the summer. So we take the opportunity for us to gather as one Congregation on a Sunday at 10.30 and all age as well. So everybody in together. There's a space down on the front left for children to go and play. Um, So if you've got little ones and you want to go and play with them down at the front, that'd be great. But I know there'll be lots of opportunities for them to get involved in the confession and the songs and the talk as well as we go through the service. And for the next six weeks, we're going to be looking at Old Testament heroes. Um, And today we're looking at Noah. Before we go any further, though, we're going to confess our sins together. So um, Amara's going to lead us through this, and there's some actions to go along with the confession. So do copy Amara and Phoebe as we go go along through this confession. And can I invite you to stand um, as we prepare to worship God together? Like children running into danger, we run away from God. His plan is always best for us and the world around us. So when we don't listen to God and run away from his plans, we need to say sorry. We put our fingers on our lips. Lord God, thank you that you have spoken your words to us. We are sorry for the times that we have not listened to it. Help us to love your world. Save us, Lord Jesus. Save us, Lord Jesus. We put our hands on our heads. 
Lord God, thank you for giving us minds to think about the whole world. We are sorry for the times that we have thought about things as if they were not yours. Help us to think about what is true, good and beautiful. Save us, Lord Jesus. Save us, Lord Jesus. We put our hands in the air. Lord God, thank you for giving us hands so that we peep we help people. We are sorry for the times that when others need picking up of the ground, instead we pushed them down. Help us to use our hands for good. Save us, Lord Jesus. Save us, Lord Jesus. We put our hands on our feet. Lord God, thank you for giving us feet so that we can run and tell people about your amazing love. We are sorry for the times when we have stood still and kept your love to ourselves. Help us to tell the world that you, that you save. Save us, Lord Jesus. Save us, Lord Jesus. And if you can after that, stand back to your feet. And just as the band begins to play, um, we're going to take a moment to let those prayers of confession that Amara just led us through just to inspire our own words of sorry to God. Maybe something that you've said or not said, done or not done. Just invite the Holy Spirit to come and minister to your heart. So children, if you want to come and gather up the front before I give what's called the absolution, which is where I declare God's forgiveness over us, we don't ask, I'm not going to ask for God's forgiveness for us as a church family, I'm going to speak it over us because it's a gospel promise that when we confess our sins, we are forgiven. So just as a visual illustration, and we've got a little bubble machine that's going to be turned on. And if you think of... I mean, these look a lot more, well, sin can look attractive actually, can't it? But God takes, can take all of our sin, all of the stuff that's wrong and just pop it away as if it never even happened. The Bible says that as far as our sin is, as far as the East is from the West, that's how far God removes our sin from us. And when we offer all the stuff in our life that's wrong, He can just pop it. Jesus takes it on Himself and it disappears. So, May the love of God and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by His Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now this first song is an action song, so I'd love it if we could all get involved. And children, if you want to come and gather in the kids area at the front or even down at the front here with me and Amara, we're going to sing and we're going to um, use our bodies as well to worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Some actions this morning. The Psalms say that we should praise the Lord with dancing and with tambourines. We have those this morning. We've got our bodies and we've got our tambourines. So we're going to take a familiar song to us, I Thank God, and we're going to use the chorus and we've got some action, so we're going to go through it now. <laughs> you pick me up, you turn me around, solid ground. I thank the Master, I thank the Saviour, because you healed my heart, you changed my name, forever free. I'm not the same. I thank the Master, I thank the Saviour, I thank God. I think we've got the wrong click. Sorry. <laughs> We're working on it.
sein kann.
God, we declare today that you are the beautiful one. And we thank you that you make us beautiful too. Thank you that just like all of those bubbles when that bubble machine was on earlier, that they just disappeared. That you are making all of the stuff in our life that is not like you disappear. And that you are transforming us into your likeness. We thank you, beautiful one, for your love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. Thank you, band. Welcome. If you joined us just as we were singing there, if you missed the beginning, my name is Ben. I'm the vicar here at St. Thomas's. And welcome to the first in our summer Sundays. And for the next six weeks, we're having all age gatherings here at 10.30 rather than our usual pattern of 10.30 and 6.30. And we're going to be going through some of the Old Testament heroes. And today we're going to be looking at Noah, which Brogan is going to help us look through in just a moment. Just some notices, though, from us, some church family news. The first thing to say is that after the service today, we're having a church family lunch. So please do stay around for that. I'll give some more instructions about that at the end of the service. But if you want to stay for that, then we'd love to have you. The second thing to say is that quite a few of the church family are heading down to New Wine United um, over the next day or two. In fact, if you look at the back um, right-hand corner of the church, my left as I look at it, you'll see a whole load of stuff there. Lots of that is going down to Luminosity, which is the uh, amazing youth event that happens at New Wine United. Um, and Lee and um, some of the team from here are leading that, which is a great privilege. And so just as lots of people head down for New Wine, United and Luminosity, it would be fantastic if we could be praying for the church family that are there, that people would encounter Jesus in new ways, that they'd hear God's word afresh to them, and that as hundreds and hundreds of local churches gather together um, from around the UK, that the nation would be changed as a result. That would be fantastic. Okay, I'm going to hand over to Brogan, who's going to take us for our Bible reading and talk this morning. Kids, I'm going to need your help. And I've got a big table of props. If you'd like to turn to Genesis chapter 6 in the Bible, we're going to read the story of Noah in just one moment. But before we read Noah's story, I would like to ask this. Have you ever done something that has scared you? Okay, turn to the person next to you for 15 seconds. Share, have you done anything that has scared you? And then kids, I'm going to come and ask you what your answer was to the question. Hello. Okay then, kids, have you ever done something that has scared you? Put your hand up if you have. Have you ever done anything that scared you? Hands up, have you put, done something that scared you? Does Zoe, do you want to share what thing you've done that scared you? I'm going to come over to you with a microphone. What was it that scared you, Zoe? thing that scared me that I did was um first like when I first um tried like the first thing that scared me was my first day of school. Your first day of school. Well done so can we give Zoe a big round of applause for sharing? Well does anyone else done something that scared them? Nova. When um, the monster from Frozen. The monster from Frozen. Who else was scared by the monster from Frozen? Yeah? Okay then. Brandon, Rachel, yes, yeah, good. That's excellent. Now, I used to do lots and lots of climbing. It's one of the things I did at university. And climbing is quite scary because you have to put your trust in something that's going to save you. 
With climbing, you have to put your trust in some climbing rope that is going to hold on to you when you jump off the side of the rock, okay? So it's quite scary. You have to put your trust in something to keep you safe. This is my daughter, Eliza. Say hi, Eliza. You You have to put your trust in something to keep you safe. Now, we're going to read the story today about a man who had to put his trust in something to keep him safe. He had to have faith in something, and his name was Noah. Does anyone know what he had to put his trust in? Okay, then, Jemima, could you shout it? Anyone want to shout it? Go on, shout it out. He did, in a giant ark. Well done. So let's turn to Genesis chapter six. Thank you so much for your help with that, kids. We're going to come back to that in one minute. Genesis six, starting at verse nine. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark and make it and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring flood waters to destroy all the life under the heavens, every creature that has breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you, and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you to be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it, uh, store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as Ben said, this summer, we are in our Heroes Summer series. What we're going to do is we're going to work through a series of heroes in the Old Testament and see how they point beyond themselves to Jesus. Heroes of faith who tell us about trusting in Christ. And today we're going to look at Noah, the hero who trusted in God. And what we're going to see is this that it's not the strength of our faith that saves us, but the strength of the one who our faith is in. Yeah? It's not the strength of our faith that saves us, but the strength of the one on whom our faith rests. Okay? So let's work through the passage before we get to a very exciting moment where we're going to put on some climbing harnesses. Okay, so the first thing that we find in this passage is that we meet Noah, and he's described in quite an interesting way. He's described as blameless. I don't know if that, uh, that, that word caught your attention. The Bible rarely describes someone as blameless. It might catch you a little bit. How, how can someone be blameless? Well, blameless does not mean sinless. So what does it mean? It can't mean sinless because we know in Romans 3 verse 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That includes Noah. So what does blameless mean here? Well, what I think we see is we see something that is analogous to two playground games. Kids, have you got any favorite playground games? Have you got favorites? Hands up if you've got a favorite. Yeah, do you love hide and seek? Anyone love hide and seek? Yes, anyone love... um, 
uh, tag or tig? Yeah? Okay, then. Does anyone like any games that sometimes get a little bit out of hand and the teachers tell them off? Yeah? You see, it's almost like in these first few verses of this passage, you've got Noah and the world that are in contrast. It's almost like there are two playground games that are happening at the same time that are playing out in front of him. On one side, you've got the game of rebellion, a game that hurts people, a game that often gets completely out of hand, a game that hates God. And then on the other side, you've got a game of righteousness, a game that loves people and cares for people and makes the world a better place. And so Noah is stood here and he has a choice. Is he going to join in with the game of rebellion or the game of righteousness? So when it says Noah was blameless, it doesn't mean he never sinned. It meant that he chose to join in with the game of righteousness. Okay? So this is the man, Noah, that we meet. However, the question is then, asked, well, what about these games of rebellion? What about these games that are hurting people? What about these games that are against God's will? And that's when we hear about the flood. Noah was not blameless because he was perfect, but rather because his life was all about chasing after the one who was perfect. Yeah, and that's what we're going to start to see. And a theme of all of our heroes in this summer series is this, that they point beyond themselves. Noah is a hero because he's not the hero of his story. Joseph is a hero because he's not the hero of his story. Esther is a hero because she's not the hero of her story. And that's the theme that we're going to see played out. So Noah was blameless, but we don't need to idolize him. We don't need to idealize him. In fact, we can just accept that he might have felt all sorts of things when God said to him he was going to flood the earth. So kids, I would like you to think really hard. Put your hands on your heads. How might Noah have felt when God said, I am going to send waters and flood the earth? How do you think he might have felt? Zoe, what word would you use? A bit sad. I think you might have felt a bit sad too. And what any other words that we might use? Amara. Worried. I agree. I think he might have felt a little bit worried and a little bit scared. Even when he built the ark. Remember, this was a man who lived in a desert. He probably didn't have much boat building experience. I wonder if he sat there thinking, is this even going to float? But you see, what made the ark trustworthy wasn't Noah's building ability, but rather God's word. If God says, I'm going to save you through this ark, Noah can trust that God is going to save him through the ark. And so in some ways, it doesn't matter how much God believed, uh, how much Noah believed that God would save him through the ark. The fact is that he got inside it. He could have stepped through that door full of faith or full of doubt. In one sense, it doesn't matter because he stepped through the door. Now, to illustrate this, we've got some climbing gear. Does anyone, would anyone be willing to help me here? I need two volunteers who are happy to be lifted up in a climbing harness, okay? So we're going to have, um, shall we have um, Jemima? Do you want to be one of the volunteers? Okay, you're going to have to put this helmet on, safety first. Is that all right? Could you clip that under your chin? And then Amara, do you want to come and help? Now, here we go. Now, I would like you to have a think. You're going to put this helmet on? It's going to keep you safe? I'll let you clip that up. Okay. Would you rather be lifted up on this piece of rope... Or this piece of rope? This one. Okay, then, right, there you go. Right, well, you're going to have to fight for it because one of you is going to have to be lifted up on the other one. Amara, you've put one of those on before, I know, so you can put that on. Well done. And then can you pull that up to your waist, Amara? And Jemima, are you ready? Can you put this one on? Okay. Oh, other foot. That's the one. 
Well done. And that one in. Now, could you pull that up to your waist for me? Fantastic. So, I think that it's only fair, seeing as Jemima is younger, that she gets to go first and pick which one she would like to be lifted up with. Is that okay, Amara? Okay, then. Jemima, which one would you like to be lifted up with? You want to be lifted up with this one. Okay, then. Are you sure? Are you sure you're sure? Okay, then, right. Amara, we're going to do you first. Can you set this way? Okay, I'm going to click this on. And can you turn and face uh, the side for me? Are you ready? Do we think that it's going to hold Amara? Put your hands up if you think it's going to hold her. Okay, then. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Sit back. Whoa! Well done, Amara. Fantastic. Okay, so just as a matter of course, Jemima, are you ready to be lifted up with this one? Okay, then. Are you ready? Get it nice and tight. All right, then. You're going to come this way. Are you ready? So, three, two, one. Whoa! What happened there? It all slipped. Now, how much did you believe that this was going to hold you up? You were pretty sure, weren't you? That's what we all thought. We all thought this was the better bet. Amara, how much did you think that this was going to hold you up? Not at all. You see, what we see in the story of Noah is this. Jemima was 100% sure that this was going to hold her up, but it in fact let her down. Amara was not at all sure. In fact, she thought this wasn't going to hold her up, and yet it held her. It is not the strength of our faith that saves us, but the strength of the one on whom our faith rests. Let's give these to a big round of applause. Well done. And if you want to go to the side, then Beth will help you get out of your climbing harnesses. Now, the reason I make this point is this, that many of us, I think, often ask, is my faith strong enough? Do I believe enough? Have I done enough? Have I prayed enough? Have I given enough? Have I worked enough? We're asking, is my faith strong enough? The story of Noah invites us to ask this. Is my faith in the one who is strong? Is my faith in the one that is strong? And all the time we see, I have the privilege of praying with people who come to know Jesus because they put all of their faith in something that it turns out only lets them down. It might be the thing that everyone says, oh yeah, that's definitely going to save you. You're going to get that house. You're going to get that job. You're going to get that career. You're going to get that family. That's the thing that's going to give meaning. It's going to give purpose to your life. And it turns out it just lets them down. It's not as strong as we thought it was. And conversely, we see a man on a cross. Conversely, we see what seems like the depth of human weakness. And yet we see a God who is strong to save. I'll end with this. Jesus says, one day the world's going to end. He says, it's going to come as suddenly as the flood. However, there's an invitation to step into an ark. An ark which rests not on how much we believe it can save us, but rather on the strength of the fact that he rose from the dead. A strength of the fact that he was first resurrected so we can trust in that resurrection. A salvation that rests not on the strength of our faith, but on his strength alone. You see, we get to be like the hero Noah. We get to step into the ark. Amen. Amen. Fantastic. Thank you, Brogan. So we're going to stand together now and affirm our faith in this God who saves us and rescues us. And remember, it's not the quality of our faith, but who our faith is in. So can I invite you to stand 
And these words will come up on the screen. And what I'd like us to do, um, children, feel free to make as much noise as possible here. Let's declare that this is what we believe in so that the whole city, at least the Haymarket, can hear. So instead of just mumbling, you know, we believe and trust in him. Let's really go for it and declare that we believe and trust in God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So church, do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. And do you believe and trust in God, the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please do take a seat. We come now to the time in our service where we are going to pray and Jenny is going to come and lead us in our intercessions. Let me grab your mic, Jenny. Um, and again, as with the rest of the Sundays in this series, the words will come up on the screen and Jenny will lead us in some extra intercessions as well. But if you follow Jenny's lead, that would be great. We pray for God's grace. Lord, receive our praise. And hear our prayer. Lord God, through your grace, we are your people. Through your Son, you have redeemed us, and in your Spirit, you have made us your own. We pray for the church. We pray that you shape us and refine us, Lord Jesus. Send your Holy Spirit and let, your, let our hearts be ready to burst into flame as we welcome the King of glory. Make our hearts respond to your love. Lord, receive our praise. We pray for the world. Let those around us see the King of kings in all his glory. Let us be radiant with his goodness and love like Jesus does. We pray that those we know who need Jesus would have their hearts and eyes open to see his love. Make our lives bear witness to the glory in the world. Lord, receive our praise. And hear our we pray for the sick and those in need. We think of those we know and pray for healing and restoration. We pray that they will be rebuilt stronger and more beautiful. Make our wills eager to obey and our hands ready to heal. Lord, receive our praise. We give you thanks for your steadfast and everlasting love. Thank you, Father, that you make our feet like those of the deer and help us stand on heights and not fall. We worship you, beautiful Jesus, and we long for your presence more than anything. Make our voices one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Just a couple more things to pray for. Um, I'm going to lead us in a prayer for all those that are gathering at New Wine United. Um, and one other, one other thing, um, a local church family in the city, Hillsong, Newcastle. Um, it's a privilege to have Johnny, their church leader with us today. Can we welcome Johnny to St. Thomas's? Um, Johnny, give us a stand up. Um, Last week, um, Johnny's actually on sabbatical at the minute, so I don't want to talk too much about his place of work. He's on six weeks extended leave. Um, last week, Hillsong, we think, was struck by lightning, the actual building. And uh, the roof, there's something gone wrong with the roof, and the church family aren't actually able to meet in their church building at the minute. So I'd also love us to pray for Hillsong. So um, let's pray for Hillsong first. If you want to stretch out a hand towards Johnny, I'll lead us in a prayer um, for that church family. Father, thank you so much for Johnny and Amy. Thank you that you've called them to this city to lead this fantastic church. Um, and Lord, we pray for Hillsong this summer, particularly as they go through what they're going through, the building at the minute. And we thank you firstly that the, the church is not a building. We thank you that the church is a group of people that are called and rescued by Jesus. And we thank you that in this city and around the world, there is only one church 
There is one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And so we pray for our brothers and sisters at Hillsong. We pray their building will be back up to, to full working order. In days we pray. And we pray that everyone at that church may know your presence. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, we pray for all of those gathering at New Wine United. We pray you'd pour out your spirit. And we pray that the fruit would be nations changed. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, church, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Can I invite you to stand? We're going to share a handshake, a hug, or a kiss of peace. Or a nod, whatever you choose. as the big band begin to play. Let's prepare our hearts to celebrate this meal together. So just before we do this, we're going to take a moment to give um, to the work of um, this church. We recognize that our worship um, isn't just with our words. It's not even just with our bodies, but it's with all of our lives. Um, God gave everything for us, and so we give everything in return. And so we're going to take a moment to do that, just as we invite the Holy Spirit to come. And you can give by going to stthomas.church forward slash give. There's a station just at the, uh, at the back, uh, a giving station. There's also a box that you can give cash in at the back as well. But you may just want to get out your phone and go to thomas.church forward slash give. And here at St. Thomas's, we have a big vision to see as we join in with lots of other churches, God's kingdom come in the Northeast as in heaven. And we want to see lots of churches planted and revitalized. We're delighted to be sending Abdom and Abby Smith and, and, and Alice and the team to St. Luke's in just a few months now. Um, but we long to be doing that again and again and again, year after year. And that's going to take all of us giving our resources and everything that we have. And so if you want to bless the work of this church, just take a moment now just to scan that QR code. You can set up a standing, regular standing order monthly. You can give a one-off gift. And let's pray for God to challenge us about giving all that we have to him.
because he gave everything for us. So as we prepare to celebrate communion, Amara is going to ask us some questions um, at the start of this, at the start of the communion prayer. And um, this is to help us remember why it is that we're doing what we're doing now. So again, just as we did with the creed, if you could answer boldly and confidently these words that are going to come on the screen now, that would be fantastic. And we remember through this meal that we get to encounter Jesus. Um, So remember that as we go through these questions. Who are we remembering and who is here with us? Jesus Christ the Lord who lives today. Why do we take this bread? To show that his body was given up to death for us. Why do we take this wine? to show that Jesus had his blood for our sins. Why is the one bread and one cup? Because we are one family. We belong to each other like parts of a body. Why do we come to this table? He invites us because he forgives us. We are his people and we share in his heavenly life. For how long will Christians celebrate like this? Until Jesus comes to take us to be with God in heaven. So church, if you didn't know it already, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you make us for yourself. And when we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. And at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And as we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. That this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join in the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father.
and we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. So we're going to continue to worship in song. When you're ready to come forward and receive, please do come forward. Um, all who love Jesus and are baptized are welcome to come and receive today. Please, everyone, come forward. You can receive a blessing. And um, if you want prayer ministry at all, then after you've received or come forward, then please do make your way just down to my right, your left, and the prayer ministry team will be there to pray for you. But let's worship God together in song.
feast on you with eyes wide open and hearts on fire we pray that you would set us on fire with love for you every day we pray amen i'm going to give the blessing in just a moment just a couple of things to say the first is that after this in about 15 20 minutes time after our normal refreshments there's going to be the church family lunch so please do stay for that there'll be lots of rearranging of seats to do and so please do feel free to muck in and at the end as well it's the family lunch so we all get to play our part there's four massive pots of veg chili two massive rice cookers going of rice and nick's been cooking about 50 
jacket potatoes as well during the service. So there's lots of food to go around. So please do stay um, for that. It's pay as you feel, and you can pay either by cash or by card. Um, so I think that's all I need to say about the, fa about the family lunch. Just hang around and it'll happen. It'll be fantastic. If you're new and you'd like to fill out a welcome card, um, just so that we can tell you about all that's going on in the life of the church, then please grab a welcome card from the back, um, just from the welcome desk, and either put it in the box there or come and grab somebody with a lanyard. We'd love to welcome you to the life of St. Thomas's and tell you about how you can get involved. Now, I'm going to give the blessing with two very lovely people stood in front of me today as we bless them as they travel. It's Phil and Francis's last Sunday here before they go on their round-the-world adventure. So Phil and Francis, do you want to come here? And let's honour these two and thank them for all they have given. So maybe hear a little bit more from these two at the family lunch. But as I give the blessing, I know we've said goodbye to them a lot over the past month. Um, but I want to bless you as I bless the whole church. So may the God who rescues us, not because of the quality of our faith, but because of who our faith is in, bless you, Phil and Francis. As you travel, may you know his love, his joy, his peace and his grace. May you know his presence, his power, and his love. And may all of us know the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, with us and all of those that we love, now and always. Amen. Amen. Have a fantastic week. See you next week for our next Summer Sunday. See some of you at United Luminosity. Have a great week. See you at the family lunch.